Hi everyone, it's Essen time again, and there are currently 1,011 games on the Board Game Geek preview list, and don't worry about it, because I've gone through all of these, and I have picked out only the best games. Oh, I've just picked out some games, really. I've picked out about 100 entries. I'm not going to go through them in great detail, but, uh, you know, and I might have missed things off. Maybe there's not enough information yet. Maybe I'm still undecided. They're just my personal uh, things that I'm really interested in. This is the huge video where I'm going to talk about a load of the games, and then I'm going to do, you know, a top 10 uh, games video where I'll talk about them in a little bit more depth. Um, but while I'm kind of just giving you the brief, brief uh, overview of what the games are, I will be giving you a link to the Tabletop Together tool and my particular list on that. And if you don't know about that, it's a website that Peter makes and you can go on it and prioritize all of the games and decide which ones you're particularly after. And once you're done, you can make shareable lists like I have and also generate, you know, printable lists that order things, you know, in the order that you'll find them in the halls of Essen. So they will help you as you're walking around if you are going yourself as well. So there's no time to waste. There's a lot of games here. So let's get started. I'm going to do them in order of the publisher. So they're just all grouped together in, you know, stall by stall. So first up is Abacus Spiel, who are in Hall 3 at booth E114, and they are going to have, well, first off, they're going to have some promo tiles for number 9, which is a nice little abstract game that came out earlier in the year. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to make a huge difference, but they're a euro each, so I'm going to be trying to pick them up. Then they've got Zularetto Duel. I've never played Zularetto. I know it's you know a, quite a light game. I've played Coloretto. That's really nice. And I've played Zularetto the Dice game that I quite like. But Zularetto Duel is a two-player version of it so I think maybe if I'm going to try one maybe I should uh, get in on the two player exclusive one scene as that's mostly how I play games and I won't try and say the German actual name but they've got Zularetto the Dice Game Trio which is three expansions for the Dice Game I've never played the Dice Game anything but the the standard thing it's a really nice uh, and I swear where you're trying to roll particular animals to fit them on uh, on trucks and cross off uh, just the right number. If you get too many, then you'll start losing points. It's a really nice little roll and write game. Uh, and this is some extra expansions for that. So I'm definitely looking forward to those. Next is ABBA Games, who are in Hall 7, stand B106. And they are going to have Feudalia, which is a deck building game with uh, with a bit of a difference, really. It has, it has little stories and you play over different scenarios. It's a competitive game but you will be having different experiences based on the story that you're playing. I think that's really interesting and you know it's uh, it's a it's not a, it's not exactly the same thing but I really liked when I like when stories added to games when it's been added to uh, oh my goods it suddenly you know made the game jump up in my estimation when it had a story-based campaign to go through. It was on Kickstarter earlier in the year, I think, and uh, from what I remember from Rado's video, it was it was all great. Some of the scenarios rely on, you know, cards attacking each other, which I'm not really a fan of either, so uh, I would, you know, not play them, so maybe it's got a little bit less variability than it would have, but it sounds like a really nice uh, deck-building game that I'm looking forward to. Next, it's AEG in Hall 3, K107, and they are going to have a few games I'm excited about. Cat Lady, which really is probably only on here because it says cats. You know, card drafting game, I like card drafting games. You know, I, I like cats. You know, Marty can't be gotten rid of. And uh, Rachel really likes cats, who is my girlfriend that I play most of my games with. So anything that she would be uh, more of a playing is uh, interesting to me. Custom Heroes, I've mentioned before on the channel, I think maybe it got released at Gen Con. That is a game from John D. Clare who designed Mystic Veil, vale, and it's another game using the card crafting system. If you haven't seen Mystic Veil, vale, you start off with, it's a deck builder where you start off with a, a deck of cards that are mostly empty, and you won't add cards to that deck, you will craft the cards. You know, you've got these kind of clear acetate uh, plastic things that have certain abilities printed on them. So rather than increasing your deck and refining that over the time, you are changing what the cards are. You are improving the cards as the game goes along. And this takes that core idea of card crafting and instead of the deck builder-esque game that Mystic Veil vale was, this is a trick-taking game. Having said all that about Mystic Veil, vale, there's going to be a new expansion called Mana Storm for that, which can only be good because, you know, the the biggest downside of Mystic Veil vale was that it didn't have very much in the box. So this will be, I think, its third expansion now. So, you know, it's getting on for a lot of content now, which is great for me. And finally, they're going to have the Master's Trials Wrath of Magmarath, 
which I mentioned in the UK Games Expo video. It's uh, if you've heard of the game Dice City, it's it takes the core idea of that, which is you know every player had a grid that represented their city with rows and columns, and you would roll dice to see which buildings got activated each round would generate you things. And it was a very cool game. Uh, it had uh, a bit too much of an emphasis on attacking for me. But this takes that uh, core concept of having those big boards and rolling dice to activate various things on it. And now instead of every, each player having a city, we are a hero. The boards are no longer great big things. Well, they are, but they are made up of different parts to make you know a unique hero every time. And it's now a cooperative game. We're working together to try and defeat, you know, the big bad. So it takes something that I liked the idea of, but wasn't really for me, and, you know, just turns it up to something that is, you know, a must-have now. And that's also going to be available from Artipia as well, because it's, uh, it's a Dice City was made from the two companies together as well. So this one is two. Next up is Alia. Alia? Anyway, it doesn't say where they are. They're in Hall 1, but in a mystery location. Uh, they're going to have the Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. I love Castles of Burgundy. The very first video on this channel was Castles of Burgundy, the card game, which I really, really enjoyed. Uh, Castles of Burgundy is definitely, I think it's my second favourite Steffenfeld game, one of my favourite games overall in general, and I absolutely love roll and write games. And this is from Steffenfeld and Christophe Toussaint who designed Octodice, which is a, a, not a dice version of Aquasphere, but you know, set in the same, uh, set in the same theme. Uh, and I absolutely love Octodice. It is one of my favorite roll and write games, a genre that I really like anyway. So all of these things added together, I can't wait for Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. Next up is Alley Cat Games at uh, Hall 7, stand A124. And this is just a demo, but they're going to have Dice Hospital for you to play. That is uh, still on Kickstarter right now, uh, but you can go check out my playthrough to have a look at it. But it's a game where we are each running hospitals. We are drafting ambulances full of dice every round and then trying to get the best specialists and rooms to be able to treat those dice and get them out of the hospital uh, as, as best as we can, really. It's, uh, I really, really enjoyed it, but again, go check out the playthrough. Next up is Artipia Hall 1, stand D137. They're going to have the Master's Trials, as I mentioned, and a few other things, but also the Pursuit of Happiness community. Pursuit of Happiness was a very early video I did uh, where we are trying to... Uh, you're playing through the story of your life, basically. You're getting hobbies, entering in relationships, getting jobs. It's a really, really good Euro. And this is an expansion that's going to add children and pets and all sorts to it. I, I can't wait. I don't know all of the things that it's adding, but, you know, that all I need to know is the Pursuit of Happiness was fantastic and there's going to be more for it. Next up is AV Studio Games, Hall 1, D129, and this is Alban Viard's company, and he's going to have Card City XL there, which, you know, I did a playthrough when that was on Kickstarter. It's a game where, if, if you've seen any of his games, he makes games generally where, you know, they're part of this series where you start building up a city, and if you can satisfy certain conditions, the city will start building itself. So uh, you can guide it along, but it will do most of the heavy lifting for you. It's a really, really fantastic uh, reimagining of uh, Card City, taking the core, simple gameplay, but you know, easy to teach, hard to master gameplay, and adding a ton of different modes. You know, the, all of them going up together made a ridiculous number of combinations of you know difficulties uh, variants and different ways to play it was really really great and so looking forward to seeing the final thing in Essen. Next up I'm not even going to try and pronounce this you can read it it's uh, Hall 2 stand D121 interestingly enough it comes between A and B which I didn't know I'm sorry I didn't do German at school I'm sorry or it doesn't and now I look like an idiot now anyway this game is Tybor de Baumeister which now, I don't really know that much about it. It's from Alexander Pfister and Dennis Rappel, but that's what got me interested that it's Alexander Pfister. It's set in the Longsdale world that Oh My Goods comes from, and it's a game of card drafting with multiple use cards. That's all I know about it at the moment, but just based off of that, really, really want it. You know, uh, Oh My Goods was originally Royal Goods, which I believe was one of these games. You know, this, this, uh, this game museum gets a game made for them every year. 
Next up is Big Fun Games. Uh, Hall 7, stand D108. They're going to have Harvest Island there where we are cultivators trying to, you know, sow all of these seeds and then use weather forecasts to decide when the best time to harvest all of our crops is. Uh, that seems like a really cool idea. And they're also going to have Medical Frontier, which is a game where we are medical researchers trying to come up with uh, with. The, the best drugs first of a cost-effective drugs and hopefully there'll be a playthrough of that before Essen. Next is Capstone Games, Hall 6, Stand I-104 and this is The Ruhr, A Story of Coal Trade. Uh, it's part of Thomas Spitzer's, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's a coal mining trilogy, maybe that's what it's called, uh, that chronologically, you know, in, in story terms, starts with Haspelknecht. Uh, which was the last game released for it, but now Capstone is re-releasing the other games that were part of that trilogy and changing them up. This comes with an expansion built in it as well, I believe. And, you know, the, I really, really like Haspel Connect, and so I'm really, really looking forward. This is apparently a much heavier game, but I'm very interested to see, you know, what else... I mean, it seems silly to say what happens in the story, but, you know, I'm interested to see what follows on from a game I really enjoyed. Next is Cephalofair Games, Hall 7, stand J108, and Isaac is going to have Founders of Gloomhaven to demo. You can go and see my playthrough of that from uh, from bef when it was on Kickstarter, but he's going to have that that you can try in person if you're in Essen, and he's also going to have limited copies of Gloomhaven to sell, and you know there are plenty of times on this channel where you can see me going on and on and on about Gloomhaven, but uh, just in case, it's a dungeon crawl, it's got legacy things in it, it's brilliant, 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 and everybody in the world absolutely loves it and that's a fact so you can go and pick up a copy and love it as well and join the cult next is cranio creations hall one stand a118 they're going to have a tale of pirates which is a cooperative game where, where we're on this lovely looking pirate ship that rotates on the board and we are it's a cooperative game we're trying to you know we're trying to loot other ships and avoid the dangers that are chasing us and try not to crash into rocks and things. And our workers are sand timers. So when you put them on certain action spaces to look out or turn the ship or whatever, you have to leave them there and for the 30 seconds or so until they run out and then you can let them do something else. Uh, there's, uh, there's another game doing that this year as well. But uh, really excited about that. And uh, Rodo did a run through of an early copy of it as well. So you can take a look at that and see how it plays. And they're also going to have Lorenzo Il Magnifico Houses of Renaissance, which is a big expansion for Lorenzo Il Magnifico that came out last year at Essen. You can, I won't go into <laughs> what the game is. It's a really, really good uh, heavier Euro. And you can check out my playthrough from just after last lesson for the game itself. But this is going to add a new tower. It's a, it's a game where we're trying to get these cards that will give us powers when we, when we set off one of our rows. And we are taking them from towers and you can't take, you have to pay a lot if you're not the first person in a tower. It's going to add a brand new tower, loads of new cards, which is good because uh, in the, if you didn't get any of the promos like I didn't, it only had enough cards for each round. So although they would be in a different order, there was only enough to you know play the game. You would see the same cards every game is what I'm trying to say. Now there's going to be a lot of variation. It's going to have more leader cards, more tokens and things, just more for Lorenzo Il Magnifico. And I'm looking forward because of that. Next is Cube Factory of Ideas, which is a fantastic name for a game company, I think. Uh, they're in Hall 1, A100, and they're going to have the Sanctuary Endangered Species, which is, as you might guess from the game, it's a game where we are trying to build up a sanctuary to save endangered species. Uh, but the, So I really, really like the theme of this game, but also it's a, it's a worker placement game where we're going to have these action cards, different uh, every round and different based on the number of players. But we will place our workers on these cards to activate the actions we want to take. But our workers can also, each card has got a main action and a lot of them got side actions that are just smaller things that you can do. Your worker will do the main action that they're placed on and then every side action that they can see. And their line of sight is blocked by hedges that are on some of the cards and other people's meeples. So that's going to add a whole new dimension, hopefully, to worker placement. That sounds like a really cool concept and I'm looking forward to trying that out. Next is Check Games Edition in Hall 1, F145, and they're going to have That's a Question. That normally, you know, I go on about how much I play two players and things. I do play with more sometimes, and we have, especially in this last year, played more, uh, more party games. Really, really got into Time's Up. But anyway, uh, That's a Question is one where you will propose questions to people like, uh, 
uh, what do you think is worse, this or this? And then the person who has to answer it is given uh, cards to answer with. So they're presented with a choice, basically. And that's a question. And everybody else is, you know, betting on what they think they will answer. And we are trying to get squirrels up to the clouds, essentially. You can go and check out Paul Grogan's uh, Gaming Rules uh, How to Play, where you can see some very interesting things. And I'm not going to tell you any more. You should go in blind to that video. Daily Magic Games are next. They are in Hall 3, stand P124, and they are going to have Valeria Card Kingdoms, Flames and Frost, which is an expansion for Valeria Card Kingdoms. Uh, if you don't know about that, it's a it's, it's similar to the concept of Machi Karo in that we are building up our, you know, our kingdoms, and every round we're going to be rolling dice and generating resources for everybody. And then we're going to be using those to try and fight, to conquer lands or kill monsters and things. It's a really, really good game. It completely, you know, completely wiped Machi Karo off the radar for me and I really really enjoy it so more is only a good thing but as well as that it already had a couple of you know, foil expansion packs with some more cards for it and it's going to have three more that I think are new uh, they're going to be available at Essen as well so really looking forward to basically <laughs> packing my Valeria Card Kingdoms box to bursting it sounds like Next is DLP Games Hall 1 Stand F133 they are going to have more expansion tiles for Orleon, which, you know, there's not much to say about just having some more expansion tiles. If you don't know about Orleon, I've done some solo playthroughs of Invasion. It's a really, really fantastic game. It's a bag building game and I absolutely love it. And they're going to have a few more tiles for it, which is great in my opinion. Next is DV Gyochi. Said that wrong, didn't I? In Hall 3, stand E108, they're going to have Minute Realms, which is you know, advertised as an incredibly compact uh, kingdom building game where we are going to be drafting cards to try and to make the best decisions. It says you're going to have to make a lot of, a lot of decisions as the king. I'm looking forward to that. And they're also going to have Origami, which is another card drafting game, but this is a much smaller box game. And it's basically mainly from the look of Origami that I want to take uh, I want to take more of a look at what the game is like. But that's a that's a set collecting game, but you know it's got all of these origami creatures on the cards. I'm, I'll admit it, I'm just being shallow and I'm interested based on that. Next is Eagle Griffin Games. Hall 6 and J112, they're going to have Can't Stop Express. Can't Stop is a push your luck dice game that I really, really enjoy. It's uh, There's not that much to it. You know, you've got these you've got these cones and you're trying to get them up certain columns to score a certain amount of points. The first person to the top is going to score those points and everybody else is out of luck. And this is going to be a you know, an express, a fast way of playing it. I'm interested to see what's changed. And they're also going to have Lisboa. And this would absolutely be in the top 10 for me. I have got a copy though. I got a copy from someone who had an extra one with their Kickstarter and I thought I'm only going to be buying this in essence so I will buy it now. And not to spoil it because it's been voted as one of my videos for this month so it is coming when uh, when I'm not in so much of a rush. But not to spoil it, it's fantastic, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. Vita Lacerda makes games that just click with me. And it's another one where, you know, every action feeds off each other. It's a hard one to explain because you've got to kind of get into this loop somewhere of, uh, oh, this affects this, but what's that? Wait, wait a minute, let's just get into it first. So we're trying to rebuild Lisboa based on a real life thing that happened in the 1700s where they had an earthquake which caused a tsunami and three days of fires and basically destroyed Lisboa. And it's our job to try and rebuild it and have contributed the most to its uh, its new glory. It's uh, it's a it's quite a heavy game, uh, but it's an absolutely fantastic game. There's also going to be a heavy cardboard promo available at Essen as well for it. That's going to have uh, have an extra. Is it just one a card? Even if it's just one card, it doesn't matter. It's got an elephant on it. Why wouldn't you want that? Next is. Edition Spielweiss. See, the, the way I learn German is just guessing how things might be pronounced. Uh, they're in Hall 1, D122. They're going to have Indian Summer, which is part of Uwe Rosenberg's what now is a trilogy of tile laying games. It started with Cottage Garden that came out last year, and Indian Summer is promised to be a much heavier one, what, the one that is for gamers out of the trilogy. Uh, because I, I got Cottage Garden last year based on my love of patchwork, and it was, it was extremely light. It was way too light for us and uh, unfortunately I did end up selling it before I ever did a playthrough of it but it, it definitely wasn't for us at all. This has got, I know that we're still trying to build up you know, our grids, we're trying to build up different sections and complete them the fastest but uh, one little twist in this game is that the tiles have got little holes in them and we are trying to line up the holes with 
pre-printed things on our board so we can generate these tokens that will then let us fill our boards faster. I, you know, although I said that about Cottage Garden, I, I, my love for Uwe Rosenberg is undying. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely a lot more interested in Indian Summer. They're also going to have Noria, which is a wheel building game, which, uh, which is another new thing. Uh, it looks quite cool. We're all gonna have these individual wheels and we will rotate them every turn. And depending on which tokens are in certain positions, they will define the actions that we're allowed to take. And we are making things in a big city floating in the sky. And the art is by Clemens Franz and Michael Menzel. There are a lot of things to like about this and I like it. It's based just on those things. <laughs> I it, it was so close to being in the top 10, but it was, it was very, very close. But yeah, I'm still extremely, extremely excited about Noria. Next are Eggertspiel in Hall 3, stand D110. They are going to have Heaven and Ale, which is on this list you know, straight away from uh, having Michael Kiesling as one of the designers. Andreas Schmidt is the other designer, but uh, Michael Kiesling, usually uh, maybe m more well known as the design duo of Kramer and Kiesling that have made some fantastic games, and maybe you'll hear a bit more about that later. But uh, this is a tile laying game where we're trying to make the best beer. The, I don't really know much about it. The description talks about some harsh competition, so maybe there'll be conflicts and things in it. I don't really know, but uh, I'm interested just based on that. And then we move on to Reworld, still from Spiel, which is from Kramer and Kiesling, the duo, who did... Um, Porta Negra, they did the Palaces of Carrara, they did a million games that now I can't remember, now I need to say them, but some fantastic, fantastic, elegant games, and this is another one, has there been one since Porta Negra, that's both of them together? I don't know, anyway, this is a programming game where it's it's sci-fi themed as well, we're trying to claim, uh, claim different tiles and claim different planets, but just... Just saying Kramer and Kiesling was enough to make me extremely excited about it. The fact that it's a programming game as well, even more so. Really, really looking forward to ReWorld. Next, I fail at pronunciation again. It's Spiel in Hall 3 and uh, Stand D100. They are going to have a feast for Odin, Lofoten, Orkney and Tierra del Fuego. Basically new islands for a feast for Odin, just a mini expansion, although Yesterday, I think, Z-Man announced that they're doing it, which of course they are, but they've officially announced it now. So maybe their version will be at Essen as well. I'm not sure if there's, you know, the language the independency is surely just going to be the name of the island. So it's probably not going to matter who you get it from, is it? Uh, they're also going to have Arla Urda T and Handel, which is the expansion for Fields of Arl, which adds, you know, new resource types, a load of new action spaces and things, and uh, maybe importantly for a lot of people, it adds a third player because Fields of Arl is normally a, a one to two player game. This adds a third player option. Uh, that's also been announced by Z-Man now, but I'm not sure if it's going to be with them at Essen. It's definitely going to be in German, so uh, I'll pick it up if the English version is available because, as I've mentioned, anything with Vey Rosenberg is straight on the list. Oh, and finally, they've also got one that also falls into that category. The English version probably is going to be there from Z-Man, but Gaia Project, which is, uh, you know, the, the sequel, the, the spiritual sequel maybe to Terra Mystica, which, you know, is an enormous game, enormously popular game, and it's now set in space and has been streamlined, simplified a little bit. I don't know the fine details because I wasn't that into Terra Mystica. I only played it once and I can't quite remember why, but I didn't really like it that much. I never felt the need to go back, obviously. But I am very, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very up for a space theme. Of it. And there were things I, I don't remember liking the, you know, that you have these little uh, these little bowls that you have magic uh, tokens in and you have to wheel them around and around to be able to unlock your abilities. They've changed how that works. Uh, there's Gaia forming now. I don't think you have to change, you used to have to change every individual tile in Terra Mystica if it didn't match uh, your particular type to be able to build there and you don't have to do that now. Anyway, this is, this is someone who doesn't know what he's talking about just carrying on rambling about a game, but I'm very interested to see if I enjoy Gaia Project now. Next is Fever Games, Hall 8, stand A120. They're going to have Topiary, which is a game where we are going to be laying all of these tiles in the middle of the table in this grid that are all going to have different sizes of Topiary on them. And then we're going to be placing meeples around the perimeter of this grid to basically try and see the most uh, the most Topiary because you know if there's a big one right in front of them, they're only going to see that one. But if you can slope them enough, then you're going to see the most. So it's a battle between trying to place the tiles to best benefit your meeples and not other people and not other players and then also place your meeples in 
places that people have accidentally set up tiles in. That sounds like a really cool little game. Next is Frosted Games, Hall 1, Stand D122. They do the advent calendar every year, which we had in the first year, but it, it hasn't really had enough games for me to warrant having it again uh, in, in the last couple of years. I don't, I've taken a look, I can't remember the games that are in it this year, but there wasn't enough for me to get it myself. But this, the Deutsche Spiegel Prize 2017 goodie box, has got four games in it. And Ice Cool is a game that seems quite cool, uh, where it's got you know moving boxes and it's a dexterity game. The, uh, the other three that are in it though are A Feast for Odin, First Class, and Great Western Trail. And that is just, you know, that's just screaming my name to buy that. So I'm definitely going for that goodie box. Next is Fun Forge at Hall 1, stand F113. They are going to have Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time, which I think I mentioned in the Gen Con video. Uh, it's a game where Professor Evil has stolen all of these things all over time, and we have now broken into his mansion to try and sneak around it and uh, basically steal all of these things back. And based on dice rolls, he is going to be travelling around the mansion, hopefully oblivious to our presence, uh, kind of reactivating the security locks and shutting the doors that we've been messing with as we've been trying to get around in secret. Next is Game Brewer, Hall 7, stand F114. They're going to have Chimera Station, which is originally from TMG. Uh, it's, uh, it's a worker placement game, and your workers are these little aliens, and you, when you upgrade their abilities, you take them apart. They're in three little pieces, and you change their arms or their head. You put a big brain on them, or you change their legs or something. I realise it's very shallow to say that that's all I know about it, but that's all I needed to know. The things look... You can see the... Well, you can see the picture there, hopefully, if I've done my job. Uh, it's a, there's really cute aliens in it, and basically, I trust TMG to make a really solid game, and I want to pick apart aliens and make my own. Grand Gamers Guild in Hall 8, stand B1, are going to have a demo copy of Endeavor the Second Edition. Endeavor is a really, really good game that has been hard to get for a long, 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 long time now. And it's going to have a second edition with you know redone art, reimagined features. It's going to have a lot of extra stuff. It's going to be coming to Kickstarter, I believe, but they're going to have a demo copy so you can see what's new there. Grana are in Hall 3, H101. They're going to have CV Pocket. CV is a fantastic game where you are building through your life. It's a dice game where you are trying to get the right symbols to be able to claim cards, which then you know contribute to, you know similar to the Pursuit of Happiness for the theme, where you're trying to play through your life. You're trying to have relationships and jobs and hobbies and things. And it's a really, really fantastic game. CV Pocket hopes to you know squash all of that down into about 20 minutes and a single deck of cards by having you know this grid of cards that we are drafting from and the card that you take has a number from it which defines the row that you have to take your card from next round so you can kind of plan ahead that way but it's a similar thing where we're trying to build up these symbols and score the most points off them at the end really looking forward to that based based on my love for cv i want any extra version of it Next is Grey Fox Games, Hall 7, stand E108. They're going to have Harvest Dice, which is another one that I'm sorry to tell you I don't know that much about. All I know is it looks beautiful, it's a roll and write game, and that's all I needed to know, really. That's when I was frantically typing it onto the list. Harvest Dice. Next is Harbour in Hall 3, stand F102, and they are going to have Karuba the Card Game. And Karuba, I did a video for that. Uh, it was a game where we are, you know, explorers. We are Indiana Jones types trying to get to these temples. And it was a, uh, a bingo style game that Rado calls it, where everybody had these tiles, but one person shuffles all of their tiles up and calls them out. So, you know, oh, 12. And then everybody finds their 12 and places that on their grid somewhere. And you could either place them in your map to provide a path for your explorers to get to the temples, or you could spend the tile rather than placing it to actually move them. And it was a balance between them. It was a really, really nice game. And so I'm interested to see how this comes through in a card game. Next is Homo Sapiens Lab, Hall 7, Stand D108. And they're going to have My Story, which is a deck building game that is similar to, uh, I keep mentioning this theme, where you are, you know, basically living out your life. You are you know, making the story of your life through a game. And th that's, that's one reason that it's on here. I obviously am obsessed with that theme. I really like deck builders, but also it's designed by Smooks Chen. And Smooks is the, you know, the, the mouthpiece of uh, Taiwan board game design. He is the man that you go to when you are interested in games that are coming from Taiwan. And, you know, I really like Smooks. And so I'm 
fascinated to see a, a, to play a game that's coming from him. Next is Horrible Games. In Hall 3, Q106, they are going to have Dragon Castle, which is basically the solitaire version of Mahjong, where you know, you're trying to get the pairs of the symbols to take as many tiles as you can from the board. It's now, it's, they're taking that core concept and making it a multiplayer game where we're trying to do that. You, know, you can only take them if uh, the long side is uncovered and all of that. But also, as well as just trying to take the tiles, you can take certain combinations to activate powers or turn them into, uh, into buildings that will be worth points, but will restrict the kind of tiles that you're allowed to take in the future. I'm really interested to see, uh, to see how that plays because it sounds like a really interesting concept. Next is Hooch, who are going to be in Hall 3, stand D120. They're going to have Rogers of the Ganges, which is from Inca and Marcus Brand. It's a dice rolling game. I've forgotten everything that Matt said about it when I was on the podcast. Oh, you should listen to Paul Grogan's Gaming Rules podcast that starred me and Paul and Matt. Uh, he told me a lot of things that made me excited about the game and they have all vanished from my mind now, but all I need to know is that it's Inca and Marcus Brand who have come up with some amazing games, the Exit series, Murano, Village, more games I can't remember right now. Next up is Hush Hush Projects. Hall 6 stand F104, and they're going to have Fog of Love, which was a very uh, popular Kickstarter a while back. I'm a backer for it, actually, uh, which it should, it should be coming soon. Uh, it's basically a, a two-player cooperative game where we are, you know, not always playing for the same purposes. It's, it's, it's kind of a romantic comedy game where we will have different roles in a relationship, and we'll be trying to navigate our way through that relationship without really knowing what the other person is going for. It sounded very, very interesting. I know it's changed a lot over the course of its development, but I really can't wait to see what the final project product is. And the project. Next is Iron Games. Hall 2 stand A122, and this is Peloponnese Heroes and Colonies, which is an expansion for Peloponnese, which if you don't know is an auction game where you only get one bid. If, you, if someone outbids you, then you have to put your bid somewhere else. If you can't afford anything else, tough luck. Uh, and you're trying to build up your ancient civilization to you know, generate population and money and things like that. It's a really, really fantastic game. Probably my favorite auction game because it unlike uh, a lot of walking games it works incredibly well with two uh, but this is an expansion i don't know maybe the fifth expansion for it maybe beyond that there are a lot of expansions for it but this is the biggest because it's going to add among other things it's going to add variable player powers rather than just starting off with a little tile that defines who you are you're going to get different powers throughout the game as well so i really really can't wait for that because i love the base game Next is Jumping Turtle Games, who are in Hall 6, stand H108, and they're going to have Cover Me, which is a game about fashion magazines. You know, it's got, uh, it's got a striking cover. You know, I think, uh, I think Eric Martin tweeted about it a few months ago, and it caught my eye. And it's, a, it's an area control game where we're trying to lay cards to basically, you know, be the most popular magazine. And one, re you know, based on just the striking look of it and the really nice art, uh, and it's got the box turns into a stage that you play on, uh, but also uh, I really like I, I, I'm not particularly interested in fashion as a theme personally, but uh, that's never really affected my choice of a game And I've always remembered uh, talk about uh, Pret-a-Porter from Portal Games from years and years ago now uh, Talk about that not doing well because a lot of people just won't play a game because of the fashion theme. And that, uh, there's, a, there's been talk of that being redesigned into a game that's video game development themed instead. But that always stuck in my mind of a strange thing because, you know, I'm not really into farming, but I love Agricola. Uh, you know, it, wouldn't, it would never put me off playing a game. So I think indignantly, that's another reason that it's on the list. Next requires pronunciation. I'm sorry. Lauterpelet.fi? Uh, it's Nations the Dice Game Expansion Unrest. I love Nations, it's absolutely my favourite uh, civilization building game and the dice game is a really, really nice version of it as well. You know, if you haven't got the time or you just want to play a quicker dice game, it's really, really fantastic. And Unrest is going to add, uh, you know, different civilizations with powers. It's going to add green dice that have corruption. It's going to add new tiles to get. Really, I don't care what it adds. I just want more for Nations the dice game and I'm really excited about this one. 
Next is Lookout Games in Hall 1, F135. They're going to have Isle of Sky Wanderer, which is an expansion for Isle of Sky. And this is going to add personal development boards that will track how far you've progressed in certain things, which will influence the kind of tiles that you want to buy. And you're also going to have this journeyman character who is going to travel along your kingdom. And uh, you need to do that before you can progress in them as well. Uh, but Isle of Sky was a fantastic game, so I'm looking forward to more from that. Uh, on a similar note, and from Alexander Pfister as well, uh, it's Oh My Goods Escape to Canyon Brook. I mentioned this earlier for another game as well, that how Oh My Goods, I really enjoyed Oh My Goods, but when it got its expansion, Longsdale in Re Revolt Last Essen, which added, you know, a scenario-based uh, gameplay to it, I, I absolutely loved it. And this is a new scenario-based uh, expansion for it, so I can't wait for that. They're also going to have Riverboat, which is another one from Michael Keesling. I think that's the third on the list so far from Michael Keesling, uh, called uh, Riverboat. Did I say that? Uh, yes, we are owners of 19th century farms and we are drafting cards to try and organise the order of these farms and then we are going to be harvesting them and shipping them uh, across the Mississippi River. Uh, basically, tile placement, worker placement, Michael Kiesling, Lookout Games, Clemens Franz, I will just say things now, I'm excited about it. I think I'll do the ones that are under Mayfair Games as well because, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, the, it's a very similar thing. I think it's just... If, uh, if the main language is German, then it's Lookout Games. If the main language is English, it's Mayfair Games. But they are also going to have Agricola Artifacts deck. This is, I think, the first expansion to the new version of Agricola, which I've got, the, the 2016 Mayfair edition that changed the art up a little bit. It reduced the number of cards, but they'd also refined them and picked the, kind of the best of from all of the old Agricola cards. This is a new deck for that, so really excited to add that and for an excuse to play Agricola again, because Rachel doesn't really like it that much, but I love it. Next is Mandu Games. Hall 3 stands 0120 uh, and they're going to have Rising 5 Runes of Asteros which was a Kickstarter game from a while ago and what I remember about it is it's a game we play as an app and it's basically uh, a, a cooperative game where we are trying to play Mastermind <laughs> against, uh, against an AI. There's more to it than that obviously but that is the key thing for me because I remember I played Mastermind a ton. I even played it uh, not so long ago when we had uh, Mansions of Madness, the second edition. But yeah, just based on that core thing itself and the, the artwork and everything for it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Rising 5 is on my radar. Next is Matago in Hall 3, stand E102. They're going to have Meeple Circus, which... I don't know. My brain tells me that I don't want, but my heart is uh, is just set on stacking wooden meeples of elephants and things on top of each other while uh, say while saying honk honk. Which you know, watch watch uh, no pun included. Uh, Gen Con coverage video and especially their Meeple Circus video. Just watch the uh, watch the intro to that on repeat. But yeah, it's a, it's a dexterity game where we are doing progressively sillier and sillier things. You know, you're trying to stack things on top of each other to satisfy satisfy certain requirements whilst maybe having music in the background or as I said, you know, you have to say honk honk constantly or you have to describe the people in your circus, you have to describe their backgrounds and things. You know, it's uh, it seems like an incredibly silly game and one that, as I said, my, my brain points that you're going to play this a couple of times and never play it again. But those couple of times are going to be worth it, I'm telling you. Next is Mizo Hall 7, Stand D108. They're going to have Raid on Taihoku, which is a cooperative game, which, you know, I've... I, Mainly it went on my radar a while back when I first saw it added to Board Game Geek. Just based on the theme, it's based on this big attack that happened during World War II in Taiwan. And it's it's something that a lot of board games end up doing, of teaching me something that I knew absolutely nothing about. And that did just arrive. And I'm hoping that I can get a playthrough done before Essen, but time is incredibly tight. And as I said, it just came, so I'll try. Next is NSV, who are in Hall 1, stand C131, and they're going to have the game face-to-face. -face. Uh, there's been a few iterations of the game before, which, you know, is an impossible name to search for, but uh, the game was a game where we had a deck of cards that go from uh, 2 to 98, and those that deck is shuffled up across all the players, and you are trying to play a few cards to these four piles uh, in two of them are ascending, two are descending, and you can't say what numbers you've got. You can say, please don't play on that pile, but you are trying to get all of the cards played without really communicating. Then there was the game Extreme that came out last year that added different powers that came on some of the cards. Uh, I really like the base game. 
and this is a two-player only version that makes it competitive rather than cooperative. So I'm intrigued, but maybe this isn't going to be for me, but I want to try. Next is NSKN. Hall 1, stand G124, they are going to have Dice Settlers, which is from David Turksey, who designed Days of Ire, Anachrony, more games I can't remember. I'm sorry when I do this video, I can't remember all of the games that people did anymore. But this is a Wild Wild West theme game, not really Wild Wild West, American West, I just really like saying Wild Wild West. Uh, but this is a, uh, a apparently, a deck building dice rolling game, but a, uh, a little civilization building game as well, which I'm really interested in. They're also going to have Dragon's Gate College, which I know it isn't, but everything about it screams Hogwarts. Uh, you know, this is a pupil, we're pupils at a magic school, and we will be rolling dice and placing tiles to try and be the best at learning magic. You know, it's definitely not Harry Potter, but, and that's definitely not why I desperately want it. But also, NSK and tend to put out really great stuff, so I am looking forward to Dragon's Gate College. Next is Pandasaurus Games, who are in Hall 8, B106. They're going to have Coaster Park, which is from Scott Olms, and this is a game where, do I need to say more than this? It's got 3D cardboard roller coasters that you're going to roll marbles down. Isn't that all you need to know, really? I want it for that. I do have, you know, at the back of my mind again, that this is going to be too light. How often are you going to end up going back to this game? It's an auction game. Will it be great at two? But more than any of that, I want to roll marbles down cardboard roller coasters. Uh, they're also going to have Dinosaur Island, which, you know, has been described by various people as kind of Jurassic Park, the board game. Uh, but that's basically what it is. You're building up your own dinosaur theme park. And just based on that, I really, really can't wait for it. PD Verlag in Hall 2, stand F110, are going to have Concordia Egyptus Creta. Oh, Creta? Who, which is a new map for Concordia, a new double map which is always great, and my Concordia box is full to bursting with various, uh, with the Salsa expansion and all of the maps that have come out for it, but uh, prepare for it to expand a little bit more with this one. And then also from Matt Gertz, the designer of Concordia, uh, a new game, Transatlantic, which apparently is a, sounds like a combination of Concordia, which is a game I absolutely love, and Navigador, which I have never played, but I am always told that it's a fantastic game. And just, just based on Concordia, though, it's a new full game from the designer of Concordia. That's all I need to know. It's uh, ship-themed. The ships look a little bit like the Titanic, and that's another great big plus for me. Next is Pearl Games. Hall 1, stand D101. They're going to have Otis, which uh, really... I mainly know that this is set underwater and it looks really cool because of that. Uh, we are divers exploring these places and it's from Pearl Games who tend to put out fantastic things. Toi, for example, which is an incredible game, but that's apparently all I know about it. Next is Pegasus Spiel, who are in Hall 3, stand M110. They are going to have Istanbul the Dice Game. I played Istanbul once in a, I think it was a five player game of it. I didn't really like it that much and then learned that it's not great, it's not at its best with two, so never really felt the need to go back to it, but I'm interested to see how a dice version of it works. And also they're going to have Port Royal The Adventure Begins, which is, it sounds like Alexander Fister has gone back to Port Royal as well as, you know, Oh My Goods, and added storytelling and scenarios to that as well. And I like Port Royal, it's a nice quick push your luck game, but uh, this can add story to it, which can only be really good, can't it? Next is Plan B Games, Hall 3, stand 0117. They are going to have Azul. Azul? Uh, and that is, this is another game from Michael Kiesling. Is that number four now? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's not a tile laying game. We have these boards that want tiles in a particular arrangement. And then we have these dishes in the middle of the table. And you can take all of the tiles of one color from one dish. And then when you've got a certain number of them, you can add one of them to the, you know, the final, the final resting place on your player board and try and score the most points that way. And the rest of the tiles from that dish go in the middle and you can maybe take some from the middle, but you can have a penalty for doing that. Sounds really interesting. I wonder, it might be a bit too abstract and it sounds like it could get uh, a bit mean at two players, but you know, I'll give it a go. Next is Quality Beast, Hall 7, stand G107. I talked about this at the UK Games Expo and then forgot to go over there, but hopefully I'm going to remember this time. It's a deck building game that is set in a coffee shop. That's all I need to know. That's all you need to know, really. Go and check it out. Next is Quind Games, Hall 3, stand Q116, and this is Agra. You know, I, I like Quind Games. They did Papa Paolo last year. They did Haspel Connect. 
and this is a game where it's got area control that I'm not really you know, that big of a fan of, but the thing that really drew this to, drew me to the game was the great, this great big kind of 3D cardboard ramp that you make that's going to have all of these various tracks to, uh, to track the game conditions on it. It sounds shallow again, but that really sold me on the game and I'm really looking forward to it because of that. Next is R&D Games Hall 3, stand 0101, and they are going to have Keeper, which is part of Richard Breeze's Key series, you know, Key Thedral, Key Flower, and uh, this is a different kind of game where the thing that really drew me to it before it was on Kickstarter, it was a, a, it was a gaming rules video again, where it has these player boards that kind of, I'm trying to think of what from my childhood did this, where they kind of fold out into different uh, arrangements and shapes through these, uh, it seems impossible, but yeah, they, they fold out in various different ways so that one player board uh, it changes through different seasons in Keeper and we are trying to place workers on there to get the resources that we need and all sorts of other things uh, and I, I really like the look of the key games. Next is Renegade Game Studios Hall 2 stand D148 and I've probably talked about most of these already in other videos. They're going to have Clank in space from Paul Dannon and that is Clank if you've seen that I've done two videos for Clank and its expansion but uh, yeah, it's a deck building game where we are basically in, in Clank, we're going into a dungeon and we're trying to grab treasure and escape the wrath of the dragon. This is a similar, but set in space and w filled with, you know, sci-fi tropes and references and in-jokes. That is a big plus for me. And also it's got a modular board that'll be different every time as well. Clank has got variability because it's got double-sided boards and things, but I'm really excited to see the differences in Clank in space. Then they've got Ex Libris, which I'm sure I talked about at length for Gen Con or something. We, we are basically, uh, we're, we're librarians. We're trying to build up this great library, try not to get so many banned books, try and make it, make sure everything's in alphabetical order. And it's a worker placement game where the worker placement spots change round by round. Still with Renegade, they're gonna have Flip Ships, which is basically Space Invaders as a dexterity game where our you know, spaceships are on the edge of the table and we need to flip them to try and hit the enemy ships that are in the middle. Kepler3042, which was from Placentia Games last Essen, I believe, and it sold out very, very quickly. It's uh, it's a sci-fi game where, I'm trying to remember what I said in the last Essen preview video, just go watch that. Uh, it's it's a, it's a tight game where it's got a closed economy, you know, resources aren't generated, they, they're only kind of moved around in it. That's what I remember about it, but it was meant to be very good, and now Renegade are gonna be giving it uh, new artwork, I think, and, you know, wider availability. Ripos Production are Hall 3 stand B109. They are going to have Seven Wonders anniversary packs. So they're going to have the Cities and the Leaders anniversary packs. And I think there's 15 cards in each one to celebrate the seventh anniversary of Seven Wonders. Uh, and you can buy a little pack of them where they're cheaper. You can buy a dual set and pre-order that. It's basically just more cards for Seven Wonders. And I absolutely love Seven Wonders. You can also, I've had to <laughs> restrain myself from this, but I've seen they've got a, a much more expensive, I think it's 45 euros to get these two packs and a shirt uh, that, for Seven Wonders and also metal coins for the game. I'm, I'm so tempted, but it's, it's too much for me to spend when I could be getting more games to show off. Rule and Make are in Hall 8, stand A139. They've got Burger Up, which is a game where we are trying to make the best burgers. We'll be getting these orders and we'll be trying to arrange the burgers to fulfill the orders. That's all I need to know. Burger-themed games. Just uh, you, you might see from other videos about this and I'm doing where food-themed games, I really want them. Next is Schmitzpiel. It doesn't say where you are. Maybe I'll write it on if it comes up uh, later. They are going to have Nokmal Encore. If you saw Nokmal, it's a roll and write game from Inca and Marcus Brand. That's a name I forgot. That's a game I forgot to name earlier. Uh, you can see my playthrough of that. It's a abstract roll and write game where you are trying to roll certain. You will roll a color and a number, and you will take them and cross off that many spaces of that color in a section on your board, and you're trying to finish columns first and score the most points. This is basically you know the you will start with the same pat you'll start with the same thing every time and players will diverge from it but potentially could try and go the same way this adds uh, i think it's three or four different colored pads and you can buy each one which will be a different kind so if you mix them all up you're going to get uh, vastly different experiences well not vastly you're still playing knock mal but different Next is Sit Down Hall 3 Q118. They're going to have an expansion for Magic Maze called Maximum Security that's going to add helpers and challenges to things. Magic Maze was 
a game where is a cooperative game where we each have actions. So maybe I can move everyone left, you can move everyone right, someone else can move everyone up, uh, someone else can only move escalators. But uh, we all have to navigate our adventurers through this shopping mall. But the the twist is nobody can talk apart from a couple of times during the game. You just have this great big wooden red marker that you can bash on the table at people to try and make them do things without saying it. Uh, it was a really, really fun co-op game that already had about was it 16 scenarios or something in the base game that kind of they started off just teaching you more and more of the game and then they changed the rules to make it harder and harder. This is going to add even more on top of that. Next is Space Cowboys at Hall 1, stand D101. This shares with some others. I've said that number quite a lot, I think. Uh, this is Unlock Mystery Adventures, which is basically the next set of three puzzles for Unlock. And Unlock was a really good, it was, uh, I think it was the first escape room board game that we played. Really like the concept of it. Uh, the I didn't like that a few a few times we were hampered by hidden numbers that were really hard to see sometimes, and that was just a bit of a pain when we wanted to just be solving puzzles, like in Exit, where the puzzles are much better, we think, and we didn't get stuck behind that. But not to say I didn't like Unlock. I still really enjoyed it. And also, one of the scenarios in Unlock was not good for two players. That's all I'll say about that. But anyway, Unlock Mystery Adventures is more, and I want to play more escape room things. Next is Stronghold Games, Hall 3, stand 0105, and they are going to have, kind of in partnership with 2F Spiel, uh, Freedom and Freeze basically, they're going to have a fast forward series, and that is a game, a, a series of Fable games, you know, based on your know, Fable Fruit where you will. The idea is that you can just jump into the game and not have to learn any rules, and the game itself will teach you how to play them. There are three coming out, but two of them are competitive games that feature Take That in the list of mechanisms, so I ignored them. And Flea is a cooperative game, so I'm interested in that. It's, it's a kind of uh, a, puzzly, uh, a puzzly game, and some people have suggested maybe it's going to be escape room feeling, but either way, it's a cooperative puzzle game, and I'll get to see what this Fast Forward series is like as well. On the same note from Freedom and Freeze as well, uh, Finished is a, uh, a solitaire game where you are trying to uh, order, you're trying to put numbered cards in the right order before your time runs out. And I like uh, I like solitaire games like that, and, and Freedom and Freeze designed Friday. So many <laughs> first sounds, but that is his intention. Uh, Friday is a great solo game, and I want to see what Finished is like. Next is Super Meeple at uh, Hall 2, stand A128. They have Amon Ray the card game. I played Amon Ray once. It was an auction game. Uh, we played it four players. I think it's three player minimum. And this card game version of it, we quite liked it, but you know, it didn't work with two, I don't think, or we didn't really feel that enamored by it. But I'm interested to see when any game has a card game version. And this definitely supports two players. So I want to see how it does that. Next is Surprise Stair Games, Hall 7, stand G121. They are going to have a demo of A Nice Cup of Tea, which I talked about at great length in the UK Games Expo videos. You can go and watch them for uh, a bigger idea. But it's basically, it's, it's based on Tony Boydell's earlier game, Snowdonia, which is fantastic and you should all go and get it. Uh, but uh, this is trying to, you know, ramp everything up, trying to escalate things so you feel like you are doing more powerful actions faster and you are trying to make chai and use them with your words workers to make them do more powerful actions. I, re I had a full demo game of that at the UK Games Expo and I absolutely loved it and you can go and see there for pictures and things and more blathering about it. Uh, they're also going to have uh, Snowdonia, The Siege of Petersburg and The Channel Tunnel 1881 which are two scenario, two more scenarios for Snowdonia that uh, neither of them are designed by Tony Boydell as well, they're both guest designers. Next is Sweet Lemon Publishing, Hall 7, stand F111. They're going to have Fantasy Defense and its expansion, The Stone King, which is a, uh, a small card game that is kind of, you know, uh, I don't know if it's essentially tower defense, but we're trying to defend our kingdom against these attackers and trying to make them run out their deck before time runs out. It was a Kickstarter, I believe. I'm pretty sure there was a Rodder run through for it a while back. But yeah, I remember really uh, being quite excited for it back then, and it's going to be available at Essen. Next is Tasty Minstrel Games, Hall 7, Stand B102. They are going to have Harvest, which is uh, not by the same designer, but in the same kind of style as Harbour in this uh, in, in another small game that packs a lot of gameplay in there. This is from Trey Chambers this time, and it's a farming-themed worker placement game. 
Next is Teton Productions, Hall 1, Stand F148, and they're going to have Tribes Early Civilization, which is uh, kind of not, not in terms of gameplay or anything, but in terms of setting, is a prequel to Nations, essentially, because we are, you know, taking our people from the most basic tribes to where we start uh, in our primitive form in Nations. And it's from one of the designers of Nations and the designer of the dice game, Rustin Hackinson. And based on that alone, I'm really excited for it. But I remember uh, seeing the stuff for it when it was on Kickstarter, that uh, we have this, uh, the tech trees that we're trying to build up. And we don't, it's not a civilization building game where we are, we're all on individual maps, so you don't have to worry about attacking each other and things. It really seemed great, and it's going to be available in Essen. Next is 2 Plus Games, Hall 7, Stand D108. They're going to have Rescue Polar Bears Data and Temperature, which I've picked basically. Another game where we're trying to save animals, like uh, the Sanctuary game that I mentioned, seems like forever ago now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are rescuing polar bears, and it's another game from, you know, the group of Taiwan board game design who make really kind of... I don't know, off the wall, really unusual, original looking things. And it's got mini polar bears in it and you should look at it just based on that. What's your game or in Hall 3, stand M100, and they are not gonna have one of their big games this year. It's a bit of a smaller one, Loot Island, which in concept at least sounds a little bit similar to Tobago from a few years ago, where we are, you know, we're hunting for treasure on this island and contributing, uh, we are trying to contribute to the finding of each treasure. And based on what we contributed, we will be getting different amounts of treasure from it. We are trying to be in, you know, have our hands in uh, a lot of pies so that we can reap the benefits but the people that did the most work will get the most. And finally, we got there, my voice lasted through it, Favelas is from Wizkid Games, I forgot to say that bit, Hall 6, uh, Stand G100, this is from Chris Bryan, he's the designer, he does Board With Life and he does, uh, he does a podcast, he does uh, board gaming news every week, he does many things, I like Chris Bryan. He has designed a game. It looks beautiful. The art is by... I'm not sure why I thought looking at it would help me pronounce it better. Anyway, uh, brace yourselves. Quan Chai Moria and also Brigitte Indelicato have done the art for it. It looks beautiful. We are trying to build up the, uh, the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. And it's also got a, a an element that's similar functionally to how the dice work in Biblios in that... The values will be going up and down and they're affecting the value of certain colors that we are going to be having in our little regions and it fits the theme really well as well because it's like the the city planners are very indecisive and they want uh, different things all the time but i'm really really looking forward to that that is a it's a very pretty game as i said i like chris bryan and i want to see a game by so it looks like we made it <laughs> There are a ton of games. There's 1,020 games on the preview now by the time I've finished it. <laughs> anyway, the, there's a ton to go through there. As I said, the, I have, I've linked in the description to my shared list on Tabletop Together. From that, you can take what little information I've given you and you can click on the picture of the game to take you to Board Game Geek and see more information about it most of the games have got rule books and things. Uh, look out for the top 10 video that will hopefully be coming up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I've talked about too many games in one go there. I'm going to have to clear my head a little bit. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for more videos. Bye.